those of you back there hear me all right? Okay. I just want to tell you a little bit about the requirements that we require of you. Not to be polite. If there's anything you don't understand, ask the question. Try to tighten your answers, in other words, to give other people a chance to talk. Don't come off with long-winded discussions. Just pinpoint your problems and the things you want to know. Being polite would be offensive to me. So I want you to, by saying things you don't understand, say, I don't get it. I don't understand, that's nice, you know. I don't get it. I want more detail. If I fail to answer your questions, say, you didn't answer my question. Please do that. Otherwise, we can't learn from each other. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of what the Venus Project is. Those of you that know what it is, would you raise your hands? So I, I guess I don't have to tell you what it is. <laughs> and essentially what the Venus Project proposes is that we bring all the nations together and uh, take care of everything on Earth. We pledge allegiance to the environment and all the world's people. The end of separate nations. The end of the artificial boundaries that separate people. And the sharing of all the world's resources by all the world's people. Anything less than that will create the same problems over and over again. If few nations control most of the Earth's resources, you're going to have territorial disputes. You're going to have war. You're going to have all the problems you've always had. That's why most people think it's human nature. They think man is basically greedy and that this is why you have problems. That is not true. I want to say this. A banker, a serial killer, and a gangster, and a priest are made by environment. If you don't understand that, in the United States, in the deep south, if you're brought up there, you'll speak with a southern accent. Nothing you can do about it. So I say, stop speaking with a southern accent. You can't. Now, if you're brought up in an uneducated region, you're going to have things like this. Those damn niggers is the way they speak. I'm, I'm imitating them. They say things like, I'm going to get me a nigger and I'm going to kick his ass. That environment, the expressions, the facial movements are picked up by the environment. It's not human behavior, it's the environment we come from which generates behavior. Now, if you're brought up in Italy, you say, come on, they eat, there's a good food. Now, that is not, uh, that's the way you would speak if you were brought up there. Vive la France, Deutschland over others, Germany above all. Now, we are victims of culture, all of us. That's why we have a distorted view. We believe that some people are good, some are bad, some are creative, some are less creative. All that's bunk. Everyone can be creative. Now, they tell you in your schools that plants grow. That's a lie. They need water, sunshine, soil, moisture, gravity, all those things. Without them, the plant, plant doesn't move. They tell you that sailboats sail. They don't sail, they're acted upon by the wind. There is nothing in the earth today that is not acted upon by resident forces, meaning your way you think, the way you move, your facial expressions. Girls behave differently than men, not because they're women. Because if a normal boy is brought up by six women, very effeminate women, and they say, oh, did I see a gorgeous hat? That boy will speak just that way. And if you're brought up in France, you'll speak with a French accent or a French-English accent. If you live in France 10 years, you move to Germany, you live there 10 years, you speak with a German-French accent. Not a thing you can do about it. So your facial expressions and your language was designed hundreds of years ago. That's why we can't talk to each other. We talk at one another, not to one another. Now, a lot of people don't understand that, so I'll say that the Bible, when you read it, he says, Jesus meant this. He says, oh no, he meant that. And the third person says, you're both wrong. That's why you have the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic, the Presbyterian, because the Bible is subject to interpretation. 
All our language is allowed stuff. It's subject to interpretation, except chemistry, physics, mathematics, engineering is not subject to interpretation. When engineers talk to each other, if they talk of the tensile strength, compression strength, torsional strength, so the language is not subject to interpretation. And if you take a blueprint of an automobile from America and bring it to Japan, they turn out the same product, not subject to interpretation. So it appears that most of the language of science and technology is not subject to interpretation. When you talk to somebody, I say, I think this is what he means, and it goes through their head and comes out different. He says, that's not what I meant. Of course you're going to have trouble. A lawyer is a guy that takes language, twists it around to any way he wants to. If he's skilled at it, he can knock you out, put you in jail. A lawyer would be considered a criminal in the future. So would all bankers and all businessmen and all politicians. Don't forget, you're brought up to believe that King Solomon was a great guy. He had a thousand wives. He'd be arrested today as a bigamist. So all the things that you're taught, uh, they teach you to fit in with this culture. All civilizations are established, and they're established on the basis that kept those in power in power, so they still run the show. Now, I'm not saying they're good or bad, they've been conditioned to that, it seems normal to them. So if you were raised by the headhunters of the Amazon as a baby, and I went to you and said, doesn't it bother you to have ten shrunken heads? He said, yes, my brother has twenty. <laughs> Is he bad? No, that's the way he was brought up. So you see, there's no such thing as thinking things over. You think within the context of the way you were brought up. If you ask an Eskimo, what do you want? You can have anything you want. He can't say a stainless steel air conditioner. It is not within his environment. So it's very hard for so-called normal people to step outside of the environment. If you ask an Eskimo, uh, do you ever dream of walking on a palm fringe beach with coconuts and sunshine? He says, I don't know what you're talking about. He's not a bad guy. Now in the early days in the Roman Empire, I am told that they used to feed Christians lions. But first they would starve the lions to make a better show. Then they would take the clothes off the Christians so it would be easier for the lions to tear them to pieces. Now the family would come Saturday and Sunday to see Christians being fed the lions. And the kids would say, Daddy, can we come next week to see Christians being fed the lions? Daddy would say, if you behave yourself. <laughs> Are these kids sick? No. They're normal to that culture. The Nazis, Heil Hitler, are normal to that culture. There are no good or bad people. There are no corrupt people or dishonest people, creative people, lazy people, all that's bunk. If you're raised in a society that understands human behavior, you don't have those variations. You can block them through education. Not the education you get, that's mostly propaganda. They condition a man to become an engineer, another man a chemist, another man a physicist. And when we go to war, the physicists in Germany fall in line with that culture. In Italy, they fall in line with that culture. In America, the scientists fall in line. If they were scientists, really scientists, they would wonder what war is? Why do people kill each other? What is a serial killer? What makes them that way? They don't fall in line. Your business is to listen to me, and if there's anything you don't understand, please, during the question period, question the hell out of me. Don't accept anything I say unless I can provide sources of information. So, so far, I just want to tell you a little bit more about people. When you study architecture, all the houses, as a rule, have a pointy roof. That's conventional. Architects do not design cities for people. They design for business. They design things that will sell. 